well, hi everybody. Welcome to the Monthly Market Insight. It is the first Monday in May. So we're gonna kind of talk about some market performance. There's no lie. You, you've been monitoring probably your portfolios, looking at the news, the market watch. Um, the month of April has been quite volatile and needless to say, the whole year has been year to date. And so, you know, we've seen the S&P, you know, down, you know, 3.6% and then up 2.5% the next day. So it's been quite volatile. So today, what we want to talk about um, is market performance, the outlook on the economy, what are the factors that play in that? And then I think more importantly, Sean, for investors is should they be altering their strategy in their portfolio based on market performance? Or more importantly, what should investors not do? So I'll kick it off to you, Sean, to kind of walk through this presentation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think to, to start, we we always got to be careful because the market is uh, extremely volatile, and that's what we sign up for, and that's why we're long term investors. Um, and I think you know Warren Buffett has got a couple of uh, of great quotes, um, arguably uh, the best investor of all time, and he said, uh, you know, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the inpatient to the patient, and right now are the times that we start to get impatient because even though this is long-term money, even though we've got a retirement line, uh, which is a while away, uh, even though we need this money to last for a really long time, we see the market down. We see the 24-7 news cycle, you know, pumping fear into us. We're able to get kind of uh, stock quote updates and market updates on our phone. And all of that just kind of creates more anxiety for us. And so we want to make sure that you understand why you need to stay patient and things that you can do to kind of take advantage of some of these um, turbulent times. Um, we're going to go and use some data, right? So we're very data oriented. Um, try not to make any decisions based on emotion, looking at some history. So we went through a very similar time to what we're going through right now in late 2018. In that fourth quarter of 2018, the market lost uh, about the same percentage that it has lost year to date. And the reason was because Trump and China got into a trade war. Uh, so we saw suppliers scrambling to see if they could make and, and supply their goods uh, domestically rather than relying on some supply chain from China. And it created a lot of confusion. At the same time, it was the last time the Fed tried to raise the interest rate. So those two things happened in the fourth quarter, the fourth quarter of 2018. And if you were in a portfolio that was made up of 60% stocks, 40% bonds, you lost a pretty significant portion of your portfolio in three month period. So um, kind of looking at some different strategies, you can see the blue is if you stayed invested throughout that entire time period. Um, the green line uh, is if you went to crap, went to cash uh, at the end of that quarter, uh, which you could argue could be right about where we're at right now with uh, year to date performance. Um, you know, red would be if you if you'd went to on the very, very low, the, the bottom of the market. And then the um, purple would be if you went right before uh, Christmas and then got back in the market. So maybe you took a pause from the market. What you'll see is the person who stayed the most patient, the person who left their money in the market uh, because they knew that there were risks associated with investing in the market and it was long-term money that they ended up coming out uh, on top. And so trying to time the market, trying to get in and out of the market is one of the most tempting things that investors do in these volatile periods. They say, you know what, the market's down. Let me take a break and go on the sideline. And as investors, we all know that we should never, ever sell low and buy high. However, the data tells us that people do the exact opposite. And so what we see right now is the market dropping and falling. As investors are getting out of the market, they're running the cash. So we've got a lot of different factors to answer one of your questions, Nora, as to what's happening today in the market. We have the Fed raising interest rates again, just like they did in 2018. And the reason they're raising interest rates is because inflation has continued to get higher and higher. We had our inflation number come out for April. That was higher than it was in March. It has continued to grow. But what we're starting to see is as the Fed raises interest rates, it's going to start to kind of impact spending. So what the goal, the Fed of the goal is, the goal of the Fed is, is to try and slow down consumers from spending. As an example, we had a client that was in the, the uh, housing market. They were looking to buy a house. They could have bought a $700,000 house if they bought their house in February. But they weren't ready to move yet. And so they finally found a house here uh, in April. 
And rather than a $700,000 house at 2.75% mortgage, they went back and with the, the interest rates rising up to 5.25%, could only afford a $525,000 house for the exact same monthly payment. Okay, so they lost $175,000 worth of purchasing power because the interest rate rose. That's exactly what the Fed is trying to do. Raise interest rates, cool people down from spending. That should cool down the amount of growth that's been happening in homes, right? People's homes are up 20, 30, 40% in the last couple of years. So that will slow some of that down as hopefully housing prices come back to kind of an average rate or a kind of a normal growth rate. But that is exactly what the Fed is trying to make happen, cool down spending. Um, and it is kind of counterintuitive. Eventually, when people stop moving and housing prices come back, the Fed will have the ability to lower interest rates again. The same is true with a business, uh, a client we have that was going for a, a corporate loan. They were able to get a, able to get a corporate loan at 4% uh, back in early January. They went to apply for another loan this quarter, and it was up to 6.5%. So interest rates are rising. That business didn't take on that second loan because their hurdle rate, the amount that they were going to get back from the money they were going to use that capital for, wasn't going to be high enough. So that should slow people down from spending, drive the markets back. Once the markets cool down again, the Fed will be able to lower interest rates back to where they were. So that's the big balancing act. That's called macroeconomics. I don't know if it'll all work, right? There are a lot of economists that don't believe it'll work because we also have high geopolitical tensions in Russia. So if Russia decides to launch a nuclear weapon, I don't think anyone really cares what's happening. The federal interest rates, the markets are going to move in, 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 in you know, a lot of different directions. So the Fed is going to do what they can, try to make things happen. Those are some examples of real, real world examples of why the Fed is doing what they're doing and how the market's being impacted. So the reason the market is going down is because people aren't sure what's going to happen with the Fed. They talked about the Fed raising the interest rate by a half a percent next month. This month, they're going to raise it by, raise it by a quarter percent. So as they continue to make adjustments as to what they're raising interest rates by, if consumers start stop spending, they may be able to not take as an aggressive rate of a hike. And all those things will impact the market. So if we look at other examples of how this has happened, obviously we look at 2018, staying invested, all right, is going to be the best thing. And the reason that's so important, if we look at how the market's doing year to date, it's the worst start in the market since 1939, since World War II, this is the worst start in the market for year to date. So you can see the red is going to be the S&P 500. The blue is going to be the NASDAQ. The S&P 500 is down 13%, over 13% for the year. The NASDAQ is down over 19% for the year. The NASDAQ may have made up a lot of technology companies, tends to be a little bit more volatile as interest rates rise. And that's because those companies are more growth oriented. They borrow a lot of money to go spend, go hire people, do more research and development, buy companies. And as we see the interest rate rises, not going to be as beneficial for them. They're going to be hurt a little bit more than maybe some of those huge companies, Home Depots and um, you know Coca-Colas. They're going to be able to go borrow money at about the same pace. They kind of know what's expected for them. They're not going out there and just developing the next Coca-Cola, right? They already have their product. They're just expanding markets. So they won't be as impacted as much as some of those high growth technology companies. So that's why they've been impacted a little bit more. So year to date, down about 13%, down about 19%, the NASDAQ. If we go back and look at that fourth quarter of 2018 that we were just talking about, this is uh, September 1st, 2018 through the 31st of December. The NASDAQ was, I'm sorry, the, the S&P 500 was, again, was down about 13.5%. So about the same rate as it is year to date so far. Uh, the NASDAQ was down 17%. So again, very, very close to where we're at today. So how did that play out? If we go back and look from September 1st, 2018, all the way through today, Right, you can see uh, kind of that the start of the market and lost, and then we have the coronavirus recession in there, all the way through that time period, and we have this year's uh, year to date included in this time horizon. The markets are still positive, again showing that the people that stay patient, the people that don't try and time the market, if you stay invested because you trust the portfolio, you're going to come out on top long term. So we've got both the 2018 crash, the coronavirus crash, and now the correction that we're going through in this market due to high periods of inflation and the portfolio is still positive, okay? So try to stay patient. I know there's a lot of noise. I know it's a little scary, but the, the patient investor will remain um, in the best position. Another example is if we just go back and look from 2000 uh, to all the way through uh, year to date, right? So January 1st, 2000, 
through May 2nd, 2020. The amount of impacts that we saw on this, we had 9-11 kickoff. We had um, you know, the uh, housing market crash in 2018. We had the correction in 2015. We've got the coronavirus correction. We've got the China-Trump trade wars. We've got the bad start to this year. And the markets are still extremely positive. The long-term investor, we're going to go through volatile times. We're going through one right now. What we don't try and do is predict the market. We don't try and say, hey, this is going to end today or it's going to end next week. We, do, we don't know when that will happen. But we're going to go back and use it, historical data to say, you know what, if we stay patient, we're going to get the best result. And that's why we're in that portfolio. So what can you do? Right? Another Warren Buffett quote, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are few and fearful. Right? I know it's a very volatile time right now. I know it's scary to be investing. Um, but right, the market will uh, be there for the people that stay patient. Um, it's just another one of those blips that we're going through. And we can explain it. Right, We know the Fed is raising interest rates. Consumers are still spending. Every business owner that we talk to, no matter who they are, they're telling us they had their best year in 2021. They're having a better start to the year for 2022. They've got their orders booked through the second quarter. Everyone is feeling very positive, extremely low unemployment. Wages are rising. Um, everywhere you go, people are trying to hire people. All of that demand is really, really good foundation for the economy. We just need a little bit of clarity that's going to happen with the interest rates rising. And if we start to see that inflation come down, the market is going to react in a positive way. So don't be scared. Don't be uh, making ir irrational or emotional decisions. Stay invested in the portfolio. And that's the best thing you can do. If you've got extra money laying around. Now is a great time to get invested. Put your money to work. Follow Warren Buffett's advice and be uh, greedy when others are fearful. Thanks, Sean. And if anyone, clients, if you want to review kind of performance in your portfolio, if you have, you know, you're just not sure what your portfolio is, how much risk are you taking, uh, reach out to Sean and I. We're happy to kind of run through an analysis for you. And you kind of go on to some of, some of the positive things are that are happening in the economy, Sean. So a few things that we're looking out for this week. Um, we mentioned all the time is the interest rate. So Fed Jerome Powell will release kind of what that interest rate hike will be on Wednesday was a quarter percent where, you know, people are speculating about half a percent. And so we'll know more on Wednesday. And then Friday, like Sean said, really low employment. We'll get the jobs report. So right now um, they're, they're thinking maybe 400,000 jobs will be added for the month of April. Um, all really positive, um, low unemployment at uh, 3.6 will probably go down a little bit. So all good things, um, but certainly want to kind of address your portfolio, make sure you're in the right one, taking on the right amount of risk, what you're comfortable for and in staying invested. Um, thanks, Sean, for that. Um, that has kind of been a lot of the conversations we've been having really year to date. Um, another question that um, has come up on a few, a few meetings that we've had is about student loans. And so if you're in that situation, um, certainly don't, again, want to speculate on what the um, administration is going to release. I know it's a lot of questioning. Things are being pushed back. And as of right now, the student loan forgiveness um, is being pushed back um, until August 31st. So another kind of deadline where you don't have to pay down your student loan. So Sean, a question we're getting in regards to strategy is if I'm someone that has, let's say a good amount of student loans, um, not graduate degree, so I'm not taking a, on a lot of um, interest on that. So, so what should I do? Should I continue to make my payments? Should I invest that money? Well, what's a good strategy for me? Yeah, so what we've been telling people is to make sure that you're saving that money, right? I think a lot of the speculation right now is that Maybe ten thousand dollars is forgiven, something like that. And if it is, then you then that's a win for you. Um, so make sure you've got that money liquid. Probably don't want to go get it invested just for a couple of months, but put those payments that you would be making into your savings account. And then after August thirty first, hopefully we'll know some more. Uh, the decision to be extremely political, right? Uh, everyone's anticipating that the House uh, and the Senate change over to Republican, and so if the Democrats believe that that will help them they'll probably go ahead and relieve it. The reason it could hurt the overall market is because right now, rather than people using that money to pay down debt, they're out there spending it. And when people spend money, right, that's how companies make money. And again, that's what leads to high inflation. People are spending more money than, than they may have, right? People's homes are up and not having to make uh, student loan payments. Should be able to go out and spend that money other places. All that leads to higher inflation. 
So what we're hoping to see, right, is, um, you know, or planning to kind of monitor is put that money aside, use it in case you do end up getting uh, some student loan forgiveness, don't bank on it. Um, and then if, if it becomes available, then great, you're able to pay off that student loan. But don't, don't be, um, you know, just go out there spending it. And then all of a sudden, be like, oh, man, I have to go back to, to paying these down when I could have been, you know, much farther down that uh, the principal payment for, for those um, student loans, if they don't get forgiven. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. So those are some of the top questions that we got this month and this year. If you have questions, again, please, you know, put a comment onto this live video, send Sean and I an email. We're here as a reference and we will be back in uh, June. So the summer months, um, a reminder for some clients um, in the Columbus area that we are doing another client event um, at the Clippers game. So we'll send more information on that. That's coming at the beginning of August. Lauren will be sending some information. Again, everyone have a good month. We're here as a re reference if you have any questions.